continue our meditations from our land book, Lent with the Beloved Disciple, Disciple by Michael Marshall. Today our focus is uh, the chapter in chapter two, the paragraph entitled Flood but cold. Flood but cold. It deals with uh, Peter's moral development, how his past mistakes, his betrayal, was integrated into his life and became the ground not only of his repentance but his future integrity. So this uh, paragraph uh, is from page 80 to 83 in our book. It's worth recalling from the previous chapters the detail that when Peter denied Jesus three times on the very night when our Lord's trial started, Peter was warming himself around the fire of charcoal. Then the famous conversation takes place. Uh, do you know this man? No, I don't know. And three, uh, Peter three times denies that he has even ever contact with his Lord. And then the cock crows. John's Gospel shows us and remembers the detail that when Peter met the risen Lord, Jesus was waiting for them, preparing breakfast for him with fish again around a fire of charcoal. It must have been a painful reminder of Peter what had happened, how he betrayed him. So in our meditation, our author calls the Jesuit saying, Flood but cold. Flood but cold. We live in an age, celebrity culture, uh, the culture of the internet, uh, when failures are denied. There is an iconoclastic spirit of recent years in our Western celebrity culture, and this demands even to tear down the statues of the heroes of earlier times, once they are found to have failed morally according to, st to the standards of our age. Uh, the author names it that uh, this canon of quasi-commandments are based on and proclaimed on behalf of political correctness. And this on intolerates every flaw in past history. A very dangerous approach, but uh, the point is not this. By way of contrast, human frailty and failure is viewed totally differently from the perspective of Christ's redemptive work. Nowhere in the New Testament are we shocked or surprised by our human sins and failures or the lack of our faith. On the contrary, Christ was demonized for being a friend of publicans and sinners and the company and for the company 
he kept, constantly claiming that he had not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It doesn't mean that God or Jesus is indifferent to sin. No. But Jesus is utterly realistic and fully aware of the fickle waywardness of our humanity. It is so easy to pull up barriers of total purity and righteousness and uh, uh, the blackness of sin. Jesus the healer removes this human barrier of judgment. Jesus see through us. Jesus sees through Peter. Christ saw in Peter both his undoubted strengths as a potential leader and the weakness. Yet he did not and does not see these as either or. But rather he sees our shadow side and our positive side, our virtues and good qualities, as strictly interrelated, because Jesus understood how by the gift of grace and the Holy Spirit of the Resurrection, Peter could be redeemed from his faults, and how his very weakness could open him to receive the power of the Holy Spirit in and through his very powerlessness. Interesting too and worth remarking that God does not seek morally sanitized servants to work in the kingdom. God does not seek either and chooses morally impeccable and perfect followers who are perfect from the beginning. But he chooses us who are open to admit their failures. God can only work in and with us as we open up to his all-sufficient grace. And there's a beautiful quote from Leonard Cohen in our meditation, who perceptively sings, Forget your perfect, perfect offering. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. There is a crack in us, in everything we do, but that's how the light gets in. In our meditation, our author makes a crucial point that there was never any attempt in the Apostolic Church to cover up the weaknesses of Peter. Not least what happened on that last night in Caiaphas's courtyard when he denied his Lord three times. In Roman times, the cracks in pots were sometimes filled in and covered up with wax in fraudulent deals when trying to sell the pots as being perfect and without cracks. 
When referring to the sincerity of the Church, the honesty of the Church about Peter's moral flaws, our meditation explains the origin of the word, the English word, sincere. The true potter, or sincere potter, was the one who refused to fill in the cracks with wax and covering it with paint. And it's from the practice of not filling in the cracks with wax, without wax in Latin, sine sere, that we derive both the virtue of sincerity and speak of someone as being sincere. So, in our Lenten journey, when we celebrate today Saint Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr, who was martyred at a very senior age, as a person of integrity. It's so it's in our Lenten journey, at this point of it, let us see our lives and our own personal failures, or our collective failures in a family, in our relationships, in our workplaces, from the perspective of the Gospels. There is no human being without cracks and flaws of one sort or another. Nevertheless, our God, as the master potter, doesn't fake us, doesn't cover up our sins. He, rather than filling in the cracks, or covering them up, is able, if we let him, and by continuing improvisation, actually to reconfigure the cracks into his final design. He preserves all those lines of cracks in our lives. As with the work of creation, Likewise, the work of recreation is ongoing and unfolding in our lives. And these cracks, these scars in one's life, are signs and reminders of the infinite patience of God and the all-sufficiency of God's redeeming love and grace to gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing, not even our sins and failures, is lost in the final product of our new humanity. And back to our opening image. And I'm quoting from page 83. Perhaps it was precisely such a deep experience of failure at the key moment in the courtyard of Caiaphas that brought Peter with tears to his knees when, as in chapter 21 of John's Gospel, significantly noted as occurring again by a charcoal fire, Simon Peter discovered for himself, as indeed did St. Paul, that it is precisely through acknowledged weakness and failure that God's Holy Spirit can further be released to raise us up even higher than where we were before we fell. Amazing grace indeed. <laughs>